The following podcast was recorded on Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research and Ben Breitholds of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everybody to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by Jim Bianco of Bianco Research and Ben Breitholtz of Arbor Data Science. Welcome. I'm gonna get started today on your latest views of inflation. We've had we've talked about this the last couple podcasts. What's the latest with housing, manufacturing, and commodities? Ben, do you want to get us started off today? Yes. So the you know the story is that we've had some consolidation and then if not rolling over in some of these key manufacturing surveys, housing data, uh, especially as of late, which we'll get into, and then some of the commodities with lumber tumbling and losing or half of its its value and so on. Um, the big thing that I've noticed over the you know really in May into June is that these manufacturing surveys that are are measuring prices paid have peaked. Um, and are likely peaked um, in May and tick lower in June. The delivery times, supplier delivery times, which, which have blown out to almost you know three and a half plus standard deviations above average, that is set to tick lower for the first time. Uh, now these are minor little looking blips on the chart that we're showing you right now. You could barely see the drop. So um, you know, yes, it's it's maybe we're getting a little bit too early here, but it's the first tick lower really since you know kind of the summer of last year and we have to start somewhere so if we do get a peak in in this data historically i think we've said this before that on average we see 10 months to get back to a normal functioning supply chain which would take us into april or so of next year now how long can the inflation induced uh, bursts from this uh, persist, you know, they could persist for a number of months, um, you know, going forward. And that's what we're all trying to wrestle with. But there are some signs that the um, the prices paid, the delivery time, supply chain dysfunction is starting to correct itself. Yes, we have issues like the Antian port in China that still has to get corrected. Um, hopefully that will be, but I think we're starting to see some tempering. Now, the big story is, or big question is, is this demand induced or is this the supply chain getting back in you know kind of online and we've seen on the demand side we've seen a little bit of slowing from the big you know rip roaring reopening that we've been living through from january through may um, but a lot of the demand is still there we've tempered but we've tempered from an incredible you know incredible high uh, so the demand is still there. Housing, which Jim can talk about here in a second, um, is specifically still has a high degree of demand, but there's some dynamics going on that are really causing that market to look kind of scary. And I, as we were talking earlier, we think that's a space that there could be people running around with their hands up in the air, concerned that the, the economy is rolling over when there's just some idiosyncratic things occurring. Yeah, I agree with Ben that the data definitely is showing signs that it's rolling over. And it should, because we have seen, you know, such a strong advance, like lumber prices had tripled in the last year. The last is you look at the chart here, the year over year change in CPI is 5%, 8.7% in uh, PPI. Those numbers are near 8 and 10% over the last three months. We weren't going to continue at these paces. If we did, we'd have a big story on our hands. So it's really not about is it rolling over? And I agree with Ben, it is rolling over, but rolling over to where? How much is it going to pull back? Is it going to pull all the way back to the Fed's targets? And then we could start saying transitory, it was transitory. Or does it settle out at some higher level than the Fed's targets? And then we can look beyond the data. Uh, I heard an economist say this best, is that if you look at like the sticky versus um, uh, uh, not sticky uh, prices uh, on inflation. What you'll see is that a, a, a flexible versus sticky prices on inflation. A lot of the rises of inflation are in the uh, in the flexible numbers, which would suggest transitory. But if you look at the sticky numbers, they're going up too. And so there is a little bit of a base level of higher inflation. That's at least what I think is going to happen. So yes, the data is rolling over. 
but we should expect it to roll over because we were at an unsustainably fast pace. How much does it roll over to? Ben, which way are yields and inflation expectations leaning? So, yeah, lately inflation expectations had kind of gotten flushed out. And um, so we saw 10-year tips break evens pull back to almost 220 basis points. But over the past, you know, three or so trading days, we've seen kind of a, you know, a rebound uh, in those levels. And it's kind of emblematic of market positioning and investor thinking on the direction of headline CPI. So if you look at the expectation for two and a half percent year over year uh, headline CPI over the next five to 10 years, that's pretty much back to being on the fence. So markets were pricing that in up until maybe three or four weeks ago with like a 70% probability that headline CPI would run above two and a half percent. Now it's back to just below 50% or near 50%. So we're kind of, you know, we're kind of in this confusion state. <laughs> you know, are we going to have this lasting inflation and this regime shift higher that Jim's talking about in sticky prices? Or, you know, is it the case that everything is going to be transitory and everything rolls over? And I think that's going to create a scenario this summer of continued confusion and potential for tips break evens to get flushed out. I think they, there's a very strong chance that we could see 200, 205 basis points um, across the curve on tips break evens at some point, but I think that'll be a strong floor as these transitory forces kind of wane. But in the background, there's going to be more key components, wages and rents. So on the more long-term sticky side is if those do rise and rents are rising, there's no doubt about that on the asking side. And if that translates into OER, we'll see. But we're going to have this kicker that could induce a, rise, a sustainable rise in sticky inflation while all these transitory forces fade. So I think it's going to be that this confusion state, there's going to be an opportunity to, to get into inflation expectations at better levels going forward. But I think this is going to make this one you know, weird summer of range trading. Um, and we'll see where those ranges end up, end up uh, showing up. Ben and I have <clears throat> have a, uh, a common uh, mentor. His name is Tom. <laughs> and uh, Tom always used to say that the uh, market moves to the level of most confusion. And right now, I think the 10-year yield is there around 150-ish or so. Look, it peaked at 180 and everybody's worried about inflation and then it didn't go any higher. It backed off to 150 and now we're saying transitory. And I've been fond in these podcasts of saying, look, we were at 50 basis points last August and now we're at 150. If we really thought it was transitory, we'd be at near 1%, maybe one and a quarter. So the market is just off its highs, relatively speaking, meandering sideways, frustrating everybody. It's not really telling us that it's transitory and it's not really telling us that it's permanent. It's kind of stuck somewhere in the middle, moved to the level of most confusion. And that I think is going to continue to be the story as we look forward from here. And a good example of confusion is what you saw in the housing data. So the housing data comes out today and it shows that sales, the, the volume of sales was weak, much less sales than we've seen. And the natural, Reaction to that is, oh, GDP must be slowing because the number of sales have gone down. But if you look at the data anecdotally, it's it's a much different story. Zillow put out an unbelievable statistic uh, that in May, the average amount of time that a home was on the market that listed in May was six days, six days, not even a week uh, in those houses were selling. As Ben said, uh, lumber prices are coming down because a lot of builders got freaked out by these extraordinarily high lumber prices and it pulled back um, a little bit as well too. And we saw in the University of Michigan survey at the beginning of the month that in, consumers are in shock at the price levels that they're seeing for used cars and homes as well. So I think what you're seeing in the home price numbers pulling back is a realization of a bunch of idiosyncratic factors high lumber prices, shocking high values, homes either trade right away or they don't move at all. And that it may not be the standard, oh, it's it's a precursor to where GDP is going to be three or six months down the road. Remember, we're in a reopening of a pandemic. This is unprecedented. We have no roadmap for what the economy is doing. So taking it back to interest rates, I'm not surprised that the market is showing the level of most confusion, 
by trending sideways without really establishing an opinion one way or the other. For our final question today, will the Fed blink or will team transitory prove correct? Yeah, I'll start with that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll start with that. And that um, team transitory, well, first of all, let me start with that by saying there's really no agreement at the Fed as to what they should be doing right now. And the reason I say that is if you look at the dots for 2023, you know, where they think the funds rate's going to be, five of them don't think the Fed will have raised rates by the end of 23. Five of them think the Fed will raise rates at least four times, a couple of them five. That's a huge difference between four rate hikes by 2023 and zero rate hikes by 2023. Ben has uh, got a chart of words of agreement from Fed speeches. That's plummeted, what, Ben, to like a 13-year low or very close to a 13-year low. So I think if you looked at the Fed behind the scenes, there's no agreement as to where, what's going to happen next. Uh, and you could see it in some of the speeches that they give. If you look at what Bullard was saying earlier this week uh, about worrying about inflation and starting the uh, tapering sooner. And you look at what Williams, the New York Fed president, was saying this week and that everything is fine and there's nothing to worry about. So I think that the, 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 the bottom line with the Fed is they're going to have to come to grips with this because the, the median guess has two big fat tails on it right now. They're not all clustered uh, around the median and they're not all necessarily in agreement. So I think that the official line at the Fed is, is it's all transitory, but I suspect that it wouldn't take much if the data doesn't pull back far enough. I mean, it's gonna pull back, but doesn't pull back far enough to basically warrant the transitory story to see them start shifting their narrative in a different direction. I totally agree. You know, there's there's uh, too much. There's a wide degree of dispersion in opinions at the Federal Reserve, and you can kind of sniff that out with you know with their individual speeches. And I think Powell did try to say, "Hey, let's stop. Um, this is transitory," and tried to kind of push that mantra again in his testimony this week. Uh, but for me, you know, I'm really watching, like Jim said, the level of agreement. Um, that's dropped. That means something's going on behind the scenes. But also, the amount of passive language is still you know exceptionally high. And that in the U.S. is kind of an outlier in that regard. So we have a chart that shows the kind of the frequency of words like sometime, which was, you know, Brainerd and Clarita and Powell loved, wait and all kinds of things, meaning that we just got to we got to wait and see what happens. Um, and that continues to trend higher. I, for me, once that rolls over and the Fed starts to lose their passiveness, that's going to fall in line with this lack of agreement and really be the pre precursor to me that this something's going to happen, that they're going to announce the taper or, you know, rate hikes are going to become more of a consideration, not now, but of course, you know, down the road with markets kind of eyeing 2023. Um, so I think the communications become, you know, you know uh, critically important going forward. And yes, we all try to focus on Clarida, Powell um, and Brainerd because they're kind of the you know the bigger mouthpieces. But um, you know as we continue to get more and more disagreements, this will become a problem, and that it might cause them to have to act at some point. And I'm with Jim. It's going to depend on inflation, of course, employment. If employment can get to that three and a half percent percent mark, they're kind of looking at for the next couple of years, which would be full employment. Um, you know that will be a game changer, and especially if inflation is running. But the markets kind of have this key hurdle at two and a half percent year over year. If, if headline inflation can stay above there um, you know toward the end of the year on an analyzed basis looking at like rolling three months then then something's likely going to happen and have to change um, in terms of financial conditions and removing such easiness that's currently percolating well thank you both for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us as a reminder arbor research and trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm our two most prominent offerings are bianco research and arbor data science for any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.